Atrial fibrillation AF, is a common cardiac arrhythmia. Patients are at increased risk for thromboembolic events, mainly stroke. Paroxysmal AF is defined as AF that terminates spontaneously or with intervention within seven days of onset. Episodes may recur with variable frequency. Persistent AF is defined as AF that fails to self-terminate within seven days. Episodes often require pharmacologic or electrical cardioversion to restore normal sinus rhythm. Prevalence of AF increases with age. The prevalence in the population is about 5%, and up to 18% for those greater than or equal to 85 years of age. There is a higher prevalence in men. Atrial fibrillation is usually associated with some underlying heart disease. Hypertensive heart disease and coronary heart disease are the most common underlying chronic disorders. Other common risk factors are heart valvular lesions, hyperthyroidism, congenital heart disease, obesity, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, obstructive sleep apnea, cardiac surgery, family history, and alcohol consumption. Atrial fibrillation may or may not have symptoms, and the spectrum of symptoms is broad and nonspecific. Typical symptoms include palpitations, tachycardia, dizziness, and shortness of breath. Diagnosis is made by electrocardiogram. Further evaluation is done by echocardiogram in order to rule out AF causes such as heart valvular lesions or congenital heart disease. Every patient should be evaluated for the need for antithrombotic therapy to prevent systemic embolization and stroke. This is accomplished by the use of a risk scoring system for incident stroke called the CHADS VASC score. Therapy with oral anticoagulants, vitamin K antagonist or DOSE, reduces the risk of stroke and other embolic events by approximately two-thirds but its use is associated with an increased risk of bleeding. All patients whose risk of embolization exceeds the risk of bleeding are candidates for long-term antithrombotic therapy. Another key decision in treating patients is whether to institute rate control to decrease heart rate or to do rhythm control to achieve and maintain normal heart rhythm. A rate control strategy uses drugs that slow the heart rate. Severe cases with persistent tachycardia may need catheter ablation with pacemaker placement. A rhythm control strategy uses either antiarrhythmic drug therapy, electrical cardioversion, catheter ablation, or a surgical procedure. Regardless of which strategy is chosen, patients remain at risk for thromboembolism and stroke. So, as mentioned before, patients must undergo risk stratification to determine their thromboembolic and bleeding risks and whether antithrombotic therapy is indicated. Want to know more? Watch my channel.